I am Abby. I am Top Knot Stitcher. It is Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Merry New Year. Happy stitching. Happy Yule. Happy all the things, any of the things. Uh, today is brought to you by this fabulous cup of Christmas cheer. This is a gingerbread Biltmore house. Oh my goodness. And that is a whipped cream to keep your beverage nice and toasty. Oh, you can almost see the steam come off of it, except it's not that cold in here. Cheers, friends. I'm drinking a Christmas blend tea. It's like cocoa and a little bit of mint and a little bit of vanilla, and it's very good. Uh, Merry Christmas! I'm Abby. I'm Top Knot Stitcher. I probably said that. This is a channel where I talk about cross stitch. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I talk a lot about stitching and cats, and I ramble, and I talk fast, and I have an online store, so I talk about that, and I design some things, so I talk about that. And yeah, today we're gonna just do kind of a typical Floss 2 video. So if you are returning, welcome back. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you're having an amazing Christmas. Um, I'm hopefully gonna be able to upload this while I'm like, you know, frantically cleaning up my house to be able to enjoy my Christmas Eve and Christmas day without doing chores. Um, so we'll, we'll see, fingers crossed that that works. I cannot believe that it is Christmas Eve. It, feels very weird. Um, I realized part of it is also, I, this is my first year not traveling home to Kentucky for Christmas. And while there's not always snow in Kentucky, it is typically at least cold. And so it doesn't even feel like cold and wintry. And like everything outside my tr my window right now is green. Um, this side of my house facing out is like all fully green trees. And then facing out from where my little office nook is, there's like a bright red maple. So, and then like the other direction, there's a palm tree. So it's kind of all over the place. It's really disorienting, disorienting, dis yeah. Wow, I can't talk, it's too early. Hmm. Anyway, it doesn't feel very Christmassy, but that's okay, we're gonna do what we can. Um, got several like family FaceTimes and friend Zoom calls and things like that to feel nice and Christmassy and I really like how minimal it allowed this Christmas to be like very few gift worries um, and just like focusing on connection instead of stuff. Uh, I try to do some like experience based gifts every year which is harder because like we can't really go anywhere um but it's been nice to just like not have to worry about all of that stuff so i'm excited it's gonna be a nice quiet christmas it's my first time spending christmas with jam because i've always been in kentucky and he's been just you know getting bare bones attention from a friend who comes to feed him i don't know where he is right now he is very likely going to make an appearance probably by trying to jump on this partition because he loves doing that and <clears throat> it doesn't love it it doesn't love him back so hopefully he doesn't do that so that this falls um, but who knows he might he might show up my bangs are currently in need of a little bit of evening I trimmed them myself out of rage because they were so long and so I haven't gone back to like clean them up yet it's fine let's get into some things today I have a finish I have kind of an FFO. You've already seen it, sort of. I don't know. I have some new starts. I have some whips. I have some non-stitchy whips. I have some shop favorites. Um, and I think I have a book to talk about. Pretty sure. Not entirely sure. I'm going to cover my tea back up and let's get into it. We can start with my shirt. These are Christmas bunnies and they're Christmassy because they're green. That's it. Like there's not, they're not really that Christmassy, but I decided I wanted to show off my collection of fun animal shirts. Oh, we also have a giveaway later. So let's not forget that either. Um, I wanted to show off my animal print shirts and this was the most festive attire that I own. Other than somewhere I have a red sweater and I think somewhere I have a red hat, but then I couldn't top knot and it's a little too warm for that. And so, you know, you get it. Um, should we start with my finishes? These are not finishes from this year, but they're here. So let's talk about them and then I'll show you my new finish and my almost finish, also known as a whip. So 
this one, I want to take it down to show you a little closer, but it's it's too hard to finagle, so you'll just have to use your imaginations. Um, this is four of the Brooks Books Advent Animals. Um, I have another one of these that is in my house hanging up somewhere and I didn't grab it. Um, but I just picked out eight of my favorite instead of stitching all 25. I didn't want to stitch them as like one huge piece and I didn't really want individual ornaments and so I was like, what do I do? I did this! Um, so I think my favorite on here is the polar bear because he's got his little cocoa and the steam is so cute. Um, but I also love the cow and I also love the hedgehog. The elephant is probably my least favorite of all the ones that I stitched, but I can't tell if that's because he's like, I think it's just because he was a lot of stitching and he wasn't as much fun, but he has a really cute little bow tie and it's adorable. Um, so anyway, I, I put them into a little frame and then I turn it out holly and jolly and it's just super cute. I had kind of temporarily FFO'd the other half of this, um, but I want to change it. And so because I don't know what I want to change it to, I just still haven't FFO'd this, but you know, it's close enough, whatever. And then this one, ooh, this is the Christmas in Space Santa postage stamps. I never know the title and Ryan always laughs at me, but this is by Wild Violet. I think it's Christmas in Space postage stamp cross stitch. If you search those things, you'll find it. Um, I love Rudolph with his little jet pack. I love Santa on the moon, cause duh. And then his little rocket sleigh, oh my goodness. So I finished these last year. I think I finished them after Christmas. I remember working on the Rudolph, on, yeah, the Rudolph while I was home for Christmas. I apologize, my radiator is squeaking or squealing, but if I turn it off, it's gonna start clinking, so the reality of my of my world right now um but yes I think I finished them in January maybe like it was still winter appropriate times um but I obviously haven't FFO'd it yet because I'm not sure what to do with it which is the downfall of putting them all together like this um but I love it I stitched it on 32 count charcoal Belfast that's I think just from Wichelt yes it doesn't say but I think so. Um, and I love it. I think it's super cute. I can't wait to figure out how to FFO it maybe this year. Obviously not in time for Christmas, but you know, we do what we do. So these are two of my Christmas finishes that are not yet framed. And so I thought what better way to share them with you all than to just clip them up to my partition. It sounds like my downstairs neighbor is perhaps building a Christmas present. They are just hammering away. I wonder if you can hear that. Okay, are you ready for a recent finish, a current finish as it were? Um, this is maybe only 98% finish and I will tell you why. <gasps> this is, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. This is Moon Dance by Kathy Barrick. This is an older design. I think it is technically retired, but she has started re-releasing some of her patterns as PDFs. So you maybe can get this. I don't really know. Sorry, I didn't look that up. Oh, I just love this. It's so fun and funky and colorful. Oof. So it is supposed to have a bottom border that matches this dark blue that's inside the heart. And I'm not sure if I want to stitch it or not, or just call it done. Um, because I do think it would be nice to have that dark blue to tie it together because otherwise there's no dark blue in the piece. And so like, once I realized that it kind of bothered me, but I was also waiting to figure out like, how am I gonna frame this? It's kind of an odd size cause it's a little too rectangular. I mean, it's a little too square for a rectangular frame, but if I add to the bottom, it's gonna be even more squarish. So I just don't know what I wanna do. So I'm just gonna sit and look at it for a while longer, but. I started this piece um, a year, over a year and a half ago. Um, I was doing a cross stitch throwdown with uh, Trisha, Three Owl Threads, and I have won my first throwdown, which feels amazing. Um, I stitched on this a lot in 2019, and then I didn't really touch it, and then it just, I, I pulled it out, and 
I don't know if it was just because like I could either work on the big heart or I could stitch a motif or work on a motif and that just made me feel like I was making really good progress. I don't know. Um, but like when I pulled it out, I was just like, oh my goodness, I love stitching so much. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. I converted the colors. Um, Kathy Barrick always charts in NPI, which I just, I love, I love her designs, but I don't love any of them NPI enough, you know, NPS, whatever. Um, and so I pulled out some of the DMC. I didn't have all the DMC, but I was, you know, looked, looked up what they were supposed to look like. And I just pulled things from my stash. So this is a combination of some color and cotton, some Victorian motto, um, maybe a ship's manner. I think there's one, there's one silk that I used, the gold, because I thought, well, that's special because it's like for the crowns and stuff. Um, I used a fiberlicious silk that I had gotten from somebody that I don't remember. Sorry, it was three years ago, so it's okay. Um, and I, ju I just love this piece. I love it. I love it. I also think I love it because it's like the only big finish I had this year, I'm pretty sure, other than like my, I think, I think the rocket was the last one that I did. And I finished it in 2020, but you know, it's really like a small finish because these were already done. Um, I don't know, I need to pull together a like year-end wrap-up and see how little I ended up stitching this year. But that's okay. Do whatever works for you. I don't think I can successfully hang that up back there, so I'm just gonna throw it over there. Okay, one other finish that I have shared in my floss tube extra, but have not shared in a regular floss tube video, but you may have seen this. I was in Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Winter 2020 with this piece. So this is my design, my first magazine design. Get out of here, jam floof. Um, this is The Friendly Beasts. It is designed, um, inspired by the song, The Friendly Beasts. It's like a beautiful old carol um, that has a very, it's a very Away in a Manger vibe and yet like it's a, like a kid's song kind of thing, um, more or less, but yet like no one sings it ever. And it's so sweet. And it talks about each of the animals in the stable and the gifts that they bring, baby Jesus. And it's just the sweetest thing ever. And so I love this song. There is a Sufjan Stevens cover of it that I particularly love. And you may recall seeing this little wooden nativity frame that I found in a thrift store like two and a half years ago and was trying to decide what to stitch to put inside of it um, or was gonna maybe chart up something or like modify a design and then I was like, wait a minute, I have a design in my heart. I will put it into fabric and I did and um, you can stitch this yourself in this year's winter Christmas issue. Oh, I love it so much. Um, I have chart, I mean, I don't have the magazine in my shop because it's heavy and you can also get a digital subscription. Um, it's a really nice magazine though. I have, I have a hard copy for myself, which I could have grabbed and it is glorious and it makes me want to stitch everything that's in it. Um, but I do have floss packs um, and the fabric in my shop, topnutstitcher.com. Um, so check it out if you are interested. There's also, of course, a DMC conversion, which I'm pretty pleased with. A couple people have finished stitching it uh, with the conversion and it looks great. So kudos to you all. Um, I think there's been at least three or four people who have finished this and sent me a picture of their finish and it just has absolutely melted my heart and it makes me so happy. So thank you for all of the kind words of support and the stitching. I don't have a way of getting this frame to the people yet. I'm hoping that at some point in this coming year, I'll be able to finish that process. I am not a wood person, but I know crafty wood people. Um, so I'm hoping in the future I might be able to supply this lovely little stable frame because it was like the piece was designed for this frame. And I feel bad that I can't provide it, but 
I've seen a couple of people finish it just in a simple like five by seven. No, I think it would fit in a five by seven. I forget. Maybe not quite. Um, but like a, just a simple wooden frame or um, was it Sambury stitches? But now I can't remember your actual name. I apologize. Um, put it in a little like nativity stable structure um, with a nativity set. And I thought that was beautiful. So anyway, I love it. I hope you like it. If you want to stitch it, you can do so and I can get you hooked up with the flosses and the fabric. They're all Weeks threads and then this is Weeks parchment fabric, which I really love. Um, it's a 30 count, which is like not my favorite, but I just, I really loved it for this piece. I thought it looked fantastic. Um, there's someone who is doing Vlogmas videos and I can picture you and I cannot remember your name and I apologize, but she is stitching it and she, um, changed up some of the colors so that they didn't blend into her fabric and it just looks so good and I'm just oh I really wish I could remember your name right now and I am so sorry that I cannot she's so sweet I'm bad with names that's our takeaway okay those are our finishes shall we talk whips I think we shall um let's start with the most exciting the infamous infamous Sure, the infamous snow globe sal. So my very beloved Wild Violet Ryan, Wild Violet Cross Stitch, my evil twin Ryan, um, she designed a beautiful Christmas pattern. And I saw it and I was like, obviously I have to stitch that. Um, and then I was like, wait a minute, also I'm gonna make this a thing. <laughs> so we have been hosting hosting I don't know if that's the right word the hashtag snow globe sal for this piece I'll be home for Christmas or no it's called I'll be home 2020 so it's a little confusing because we're not using I'll be home for Christmas or I'll be home sal because there's a lot of Christmassy stuff out there and that got confusing so we are just using the hashtag snow globe sal because it is a snow globe design sorry I thought I heard jam and I was ready to catch the partition. Um, here's what I have so far. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. So my house is entirely done other than I need to add the red ribbons and then I need to fill in the door because I cannot find that color to save my life. So I'm gonna find a, a good substitute. Um, and then of course I have to fill in the base down here. This is, I was waiting for a missing color, which I now have, and then it's just fill, fill, fill. Um, and at the bottom it says, I'll be home for Christmas. I absolutely love this piece. It's been so much fun to stitch it with everybody and like see how different everyone's looks. <sighs> it's delightful. Um, seeing it on like a whole bunch of different fabrics has been really fun. There's like a lot of beautiful, beautiful blues and kind of like purples. And then some people have done it on black or navy. And oh, it's just, it's just delicious. And I love it. Um, I am stitching mine on Picture This Plus Tarnish, which is this lovely light gray, green, greenish, grayish situation. It's a little bit more green in real life than it's showing right there, but it's pretty accurate. Um, and I just, oh, I just love it. I love it so much. So I'm hoping that I will be able to finish it up throughout today and tomorrow. Um, while doing some other, you know, fun Christmassy things, I think it'll be good. I think it will be quite possible. I also have now some different embellishments and things from my Stitchy Box Advent Box that I can add. So I might be adding some beads to my tree or to probably just to the tree. I don't really know. I don't know how to use beads, but I love it. And so next time I show you this, I think it will be done. Um, you can get this pattern on Ryan's website. I will link it below. You can join our hashtag at any time. We will be there to um, applaud your work and marvel at your beautiful stitching. If you need needle minders, this one is a little snow globe needle minder. I've been putting these in some of the orders that go out from Top Knot Stitcher Shop. Um, there's a few different snow globe designs. 
um, I try to throw in a needle minder when I can and also it's like not really a regular thing but I tend to go through a batch of freebie needle minders in larger orders or new customers or returning customers kind of just on a whim so you may have gotten one if you've ordered from me recently or you may get one if you order from me soon because I have like five more I'm also realizing how nicely my eyes match my fabric that's lovely um, also this one this festive AF is from my girl Jen delicious threads who also made this project bag I realized I don't really have any Christmas project bags I have one that's like a plaid little uh like zippy I think it's supposed to be like an iPad case or something like that that I got at Target in the dollar spot for three dollars but it is it's like a buffalo check that's my only Christmas one um I also have finally tried out the bendy flip with this project and I really am enjoying it um I participated in one of Bendy's live sales. This is from Bags Plus, I think, which is a UK company. I could be wrong on the name of it. Um, they're a UK company, so you can buy from them online. They have an Etsy shop and they have all these cool little floss buddy organizer things um, that are really cute and fun. But if you buy it from them, you have to pay for international shipping, which is expensive. And so Bendy, every once in a while, gets a whole big shipment and she does a live sale and then you pay normal shipping and so I bought a couple I finally caught a live sale and I was just working and kind of had her on while I was while I was puttering around the studio and there were a couple designs that caught my attention and so I got this I'm trying to like move the floss out of the way but it's just like a nice little spooky pumpkins and things so again not Christmassy yet I'm using it for a Christmas project um, and then I have another one that I did not grab. It is also Halloween and it's a larger, like 20 or 25 pocket. I forget exactly. Um, this is a little 12 pocket and I really like it because then it fits in my project bag super easily. I can see my floss super easily. The extra stuff I can just throw in the back of it. Of course I do still have loose floss floating around, but I'm, I'm quite a fan and then I've also been putting like when it, if I just have extra thread I've just been tucking it in the pockets underneath and so like this project had about 12 colors not exactly but close but I could see using a larger one and then having like a spot for the bobbin and a spot for my partially used thread because I hate having to like keep track of like if you wind it back around the bobbin it just is the messiest thing in the world but I don't want to waste the thread and if I have all my bobbins, I don't necessarily have like time to deal with like a thread card, especially if it's a little, you know, I like this thing. I am interested in adding to my collection. It seems like a very functional <gasps> item. So that's my I'll be home Sal. Please join us, please tag us. Um, hashtag snow globe, S-A-L, stitch along. Stitch along meaning start whenever, finish never, start together or start whenever, finish never. It's gonna be great. Birdie is stitching it too. I need to check in on her progress. Um, she is doing hers on like a light gray Ada, I think. I think so. And I think her mom is also stitching it. I should, I should, I'll get an update for next time. Don't you worry. Um, I have the tiniest amount of progress, hardly worth showing, but I'm gonna show you anyway on my, Actually, I don't remember if I've showed you this at all because I hadn't stitched very much of it, but I have started Polly Wally Doodle by La Dee Da. This is a twin stitch with Mitch Stitch, my girl. Um, she gave it to me at StitchCon 2019. Yeah, uh, because we had stitched the Bitty Doodah the year before, and so we picked out our fabric and floss together. Oh, the fabric, it looks so good right there. That is very accurate. It looks so fun. Um, and I have been stitching this when on calls with Michelle. Um, I joined the Mittagong Stitchers Retreat for a little bit and stitched and then had a little stitchy catch up. And so I've been stitching really slowly. 
uh, because this is a 32 count opalescent under the sea fabrics in a color I don't remember the name of. It's gorgeous and I love it and it's shiny and fun, but it is a pain to stitch two over two on. So I kind of wish I had done one over two and I haven't done enough that I couldn't just rip it out or even just like start. No, I would rip it out. That's, that's not that bad, but I just, I like it. I like it though, the coverage and everything. So I'm not exactly sure, but I'm, this is like a slow, this is gonna be a slow burner for a little while for sure. Um, We are stitching it in, um, this is one that I am stitching in NPI because there are only like six colors and we were like, yes, we should do this. We should treat ourselves. We have our little keepsakes thread keep. Um, we made a couple color substitutions to fit the fabric and also there's other colors that are on a different thing. Um, but it is nice to stitch. I do like stitching with silk. Um, just feels so nice. This needle minder is from the first Stitch Con. Mitchie and I have matching ones. This needle minder is from my shop and this needle minder is from my shop. If you were curious. And it is all stored in my Diana bag, except it doesn't fit because I couldn't find a smaller Q-snap. It's not a very big design, um, but I have it in a very large Q-snap because it's a large piece of fabric. So. You do what you do. Okay, I have two other new starts to share with you. The first one is a project that I have been like dreaming of starting for a, a long time and yet didn't start until like a week ago and then I've barely touched it since. But way back in March, a lot of designers were releasing the Be Well and Stitch freebie patterns and I was over the moon with this beautiful show of solidarity and love and kindness. And I especially loved the design by, I don't have my iPad to be able to show you, and I'm not putting in a picture, I'm sorry. But the design from Janine McGowan, The Blue Flower, and she has this gorgeous piece, it's called Let Joy Be Unconfined. It says, let joy be unconfined, it's got all these little pretty swirlies and flowers, and it's charted in the most delicious palette of dinky dyes silk. I don't know what it is with silk today. All my projects, almost, not quite all, but a lot of them are very silky and that's very fun. I'm gonna try to pull them together. Um, so I had seen the pattern, immediately ordered the called for dinky dyes that you can get in my shop. Um, there was a couple issues with my shipment and it took a little while to sort it out. And so by the time I got them, I was like overwhelmed with other distracted stitching plans. And finally, eventually I got my self organized enough to start it. And I am stitching mine on, I think it's 36 count sand. Yes, 36 count sand from Picture This Plus. Oh, look how pretty all those colors are. And there's my start. It actually goes like that. Oh, it's gonna be so delicious. I'm so excited. Um, and this is one, like this is interesting because it's also 36 count. Was the other one 36 or 32? Oh, and I missed a color. There it is. Oh, it's just, it's so, it's so, it's so good. I'm very excited and I, would like to finish. I haven't really worked on it much. Like I worked on it enough to have it started and I took it on took it on like a little staycation weekend. Sorry, there's hair in my mouth. I apologize. That was embarrassing. Um, but I didn't really work on it at all other than putting in a couple lengths. So I'm excited for that to be a fun holiday stitchy project. My Grime Guard that I just shared was from DLK's Crafts on Etsy. She's awesome, she has really cool grime guards. This project bag, I still don't know who it's from, but it's my little magpie bag. I should put my zippity doodle, not zippity, poly wally doodle in here, because Michelle was really excited about this bag when she saw it. Anyway, 
Um, one other new start and it is almost finished and I'm glad I can show you here because I will be mailing it off as soon as it is done. Um, one of my coworkers lost her cat um, to a very aggressive brain tumor situation and it was very, very sad. He was only like seven or something, I think. I could be wrong on that, but like, you know, still in the prime of his life and um, got really sick unexpectedly and it was just a really heartbreaking few weeks and then um, he unfortunately passed away. And so we have all just been feeling for her like to have that happen right before Christmas when like, you know, she lives alone and her family's far away and all of that. Um, and to lose her beloved cat, I just, my heart was just broken. So I have had this pattern in my stash for a long time and just haven't needed it yet. Um, but this is a design that's called Angel Cat. It's from Sub Rosa. I will link it below, but oh, there he is. It's just a little cat with little angel wings. Um, and so I just need to finish the border um, and then he'll be all set. Oh, and he needs whiskers and a mouse and eyeballs. Um, I, you know, the, the pattern is just like a all white cat, I think. And so I'm gonna go through and, um, or I went through and I, I brought some orange down. I like changed his coloring to look as much like him as I could. And then I changed up the colors of this to fit her favorite colors, which are, which is yellow. Um, and then I also, because of that, I'm gonna go back and kind of change his little garlandy thing to a different, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it up a little, but I'm just like so heartbroken for her and I'm glad I can send her. I know she'll, I know she'll appreciate this. Um, this is like not a normal thing that I would do, but I just like, I just can't imagine how sad she is. And, um, so I'm really, I'm really happy to be able to send her a little love in this way. Um, I'm hoping that I have a frame that this will kind of fit in. I don't really know. I need to probably take a look and see if, if not, then I will try to order something. Um, little kitty luckily she does have another cat so she's not alone and so she can she can be with her other cat in her sadness um but man i just can't imagine dealing with that at the holidays okay let's go back to being mary for a minute um i have two they're not really new starts because i haven't really started them other than reading through some of the directions but Two new projects, two soon-to-be whips that are non-stitchy, well, non-cross-stitch. Because I realized that since I'm here for Christmas, I don't have a stocking here. And my boyfriend and I will be doing Christmas together, but he doesn't have a stocking here. And so I was like, wait a minute. Well, he was actually like, wait a minute, we need stockings. Can you make us some? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, can you stitch us some? And I was like, well, maybe in like five years but not now. But guess what? If you watched my small business shout out video, you saw the most adorable little Pooh Bear and Piglet, like Christmassy ornamenty doll things that I was making with Ryan. And I've barely touched them since and they're in a different room, so I can't show you. But the same shop, Cheswick Company on Etsy has a lot of beautiful stocking patterns and they're like, I think this is essentially just like wool applique, felt applique. I don't know. I don't know things, but I have now, oops, all of the pieces. Sorry, I was checking that there were bells in here because, oh, there they are. <laughs> I hadn't heard them. Um, I have all the felt and things that I need other than thread um, to make this and I think that's so cool and so fun and like homemade and stitchy but not um actually involving cross stitching a stocking because I do not have that kind of stamina um but this is the one that he picked out and I think it's super fun and cute but wait until you see the one that I picked out and then you're gonna be like why did you pick this there were so many cooler ones yes there were there were so many cooler ones but it's like classic and Christmas and whatever 
uh, but mine is significantly better. It's Christmas whales! And a narwhal and a beluga with a little, or a manatee, is that a manatee or a? It looks kind of like a manatee, but it also could be a beluga. That little gray one with the wreath around his head, the wreath around his head, are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. So this one is obviously a lot more detailed and kind of like advanced level compared to that other one. Um, I'm a little nervous about it. I don't know if I am up to the challenge. There's a lot more embroidery involved with, for the whale's details, but I think that I can manage because it looks like mostly just backstitching everywhere. And I can definitely do that. But I ordered these shortly after Thanksgiving. Um, she has kits and the whales she was out of stock of the kit and so i asked her how long like if i could pre-order it for when she gets all the materials and she said yes i just don't know when and i was like that's okay it's okay i will manage um and so i got these like maybe december 10th and i knew that it was going to be not really feasible to finish this one i was hopeful that i could finish the other one but i haven't even started because it's been busy, life is busy, the shop's been busy, thank you. Um, you know, gave myself grace. So I did actually discover though, I have two project bags that I made a couple years ago um, that are in Christmas E colors. They're not Christmas specific, but one's red and one's black and sparkly with like gold. So we're gonna use those as our stockings and it's gonna be great. Um, and then for next year, this will be done. But like this one especially was never going to happen this year. I also bought a third one because I was thinking that if I was too scared of doing the whales, I would do this one. And now I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I might, I might just sell it. I might make it for some, like Jam would love it. He doesn't need it. Um, maybe I would make it for my sister. I don't know, but it's this little holly leaves. And I think that's really cute too. So... I'm not entirely sure, but I'm excited about these and they are really well-made kits. I don't know how good the instructions are because I haven't done it. And some of the instructions on the ornaments were a little confusing, but like made sense eventually. So I'm hoping that this will be, they'll be fine, they'll be fine. So that's a project for later. I am excited to dive into it. And that is all that I have to share other than a couple like haul and shop updates. Um, so I'm about to do that. And then I'm going to talk about one book as long as I don't forget the book. Hmm. So delicious and Christmassy and still a little bit warm. I have it right by an open window, so it's getting a little chilly, but whatever. Mm -mm -mm. Speaking of Christmas, I want to take a moment to say, first of all, thank you for all of your support of the Top Knot Stitcher shop, topknotstitcher.com. Um, I have a lot of really exciting things coming up, um, exciting things in store for you all. I wanted to share a couple things. First of all, I am doing a giveaway collaboration with Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. And so if you go to her video, her channel, her Instagram, you can get a code and that is good for 15% off your order. Um, it is only good through December 24th and that is the day that I am filming this. So you probably are only gonna be able to use it if you haven't heard about it already and you happen to watch this video right at the start of when it is live, then you can go use it. But tomorrow on Christmas day, I'm going to draw a name of the from the people who have used the coupon code the discount code and then they will get a gift card which I just think is so fun I'm so excited to be able to do that um so last chance if you if you need that in your life which you do and also Julie is awesome I have gotten back into reading lately and so I've really been loving her videos because she always talks about books at the end and I don't read all this like she reads a lot more like fantasy stuff than I do but I also like I can get down with that so go check her out you already know her you love her um I haven't really been wa I oh, 
what is you're on my phone so I can't look this up but I'm picturing who I just watched the first video of the other day and I'm gonna put her down below and she's really really sweet and cute and she just got a sewing machine for Christmas and I honestly cannot remember any part of your name and I am so sorry this is why I should write notes beforehand something to do with reading maybe um, but she just made her first project bag. She's making more. She is stitching, obviously. She's a floss tuber. Um, I don't know. I've only watched one of her. I watched her most recent video and promptly forgot everything about her, apparently. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'll give you a proper better shout out next time, but I will put her link below and you should go check her out. Also, um... Just trying to remember. I can't remember. I apologize. Um, I forgot about another FFO. Technically, I don't know if I've shared this, but this is my Trans Wizards Welcome freebie pattern. You can get it on my Instagram. Um, and I FFO'd mine by just cutting it out and putting it in one of these little shadow box clippy clippy frames, and it sits on my Harry Potter bookshelf now. And I love it. I l have gotten so many, like, that seems to be the way to finish it is either it's like a patch on a jacket which awesome or it's framed and on your harry potter shelf also awesome and i just think that's like that's not like how i i mean i get that's probably how i would have finished mine because like obviously what else would you do with it but i just oh i just love it i love it i love it i love it and so it also warms my heart when i see people stitch it and finish it and I've seen some color variations to match the different pride flags and I love it and yeah we don't need JK Rowling I was reading I haven't finished it yet I am reading a really fascinating article about like what's kind of gone down like not really it's like an editorial about like who has JK Rowling become and it is fascinating. So I will link that below as well. I need to finish reading it, but it was off to a pretty good start. Okay, we are gonna do some shop highlights. First off, new in the Top Knot Stitcher shop. You've seen it, you love it. The Top Knot Stitcher DIY Needle Minder Kit. Oh, this is one of my favorite things that I've ever done. It is super cute, it's super fun. I love, love, love how much you all love this. And I love seeing everyone's needle minders. Um, it comes with, excuse me, it comes with a set of 10 magnets, really good magnets that will hold onto your needle for you. It comes with a little tiny thing of E6000 and instructions for what to do. Um, it comes with a coupon code for $5 off your next purchase. So bargain, cause this is only $12, there it is. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, and then you also get a few little buttons and pieces that are needle minder a bowl, or you can use your own things. I think it's super awesome. You all think it's super awesome. Thank you for your support and love. Um, I have right now, I think eight left. Um, I have some of the stuff to make another batch, but I don't yet have all of the stuff to make another batch. So if you are like, I really wish I had one, I want it, I need it right now. Um, I need a stocking stuffer for myself that will come after Christmas because that's fine. Time is irrelevant now. Um, it's a great little, it's a great little fun gift. It's a really easy, fun gift to send to a friend. And I just, I love it and I'm proud of it. The end. Not a Top Nut Stitcher product, but this is a new release that is from um, Caritas Samplings, thank you. Um, and this is Nature's Peace. Amy, this is your copy that's about to go in the mail because I got this, I got it delivered yesterday um, and then forgot to, like I pulled it out for you, but then I didn't ship it yet. So um, this is available on my shop, Nature's Peace. I think it's beautiful. It's inspired by a trip to the Rocky Mountains. Oh, and it just like, I feel more peaceful looking at it, you know? It's just so nice. 
Um, it's stitched on called for his 40 count legacy uh, in DMC with needlepoint silk conversions listed. It's interesting. Um, da, 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 da. It's only 136 by 95. Like that's, oh, it's just beautiful. Also, I'm pretty sure that I have some 40 count legacy in the shop. It's not in the shop yet, but I have a whole bunch of fabric coming soon. And by coming soon, I mean I have it. I just need to <laughs> list it and deal with it. Anyway, nature's piece. Very exciting. Very cute. I love the moon. Anything with the moon. I love the, like, elk and bears and the little bear in the tree. Oh, I just love it. So, Amy, I will get that to you. It will go out in the mail today, which means really, like, Saturday. Um, I also just got some Gentle Arts threads. They, I have... <laughs> I placed an order for 10 skeins each of like a bunch of colors, like maybe 30 colors, right? So I was going to, I knew that they weren't all going to be in stock, but like, you know, I want, I, Gentle Art has been hard to come by because they have been under more shutdown restrictions and all the things. I got, out of those 30 some colors, I got nine of them. So if you need nine gas colors, I have them. I have some other ones that are already in stock too, but um, yeah, like be kind to your needlework stores who cannot keep fancy floss in stock because it is a difficult. Also new in the shop is of course the Winds of Autumn Blackbird book, which is gorgeous. I'm gonna show you my favorite one. Do, 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 do. That's not it. Um, nope. Sorry, hold on. Patience, please. Um, they always have such extensive finishing instructions, which gives me hope that if I ever stitched one of these things, I could finish it. Like this berry with this crow and the giant house. Well, it's a giant crow, it's a normal house. I just, I think that's awesome. This is the First Winds of Autumn, and oh, it is stitched by Barb herself. Listen, the wind is rising and the air is wild with leaves. We have had our summer evenings now for October eves. That is by Humbert Wolf. Um, ooh, it just looks so nice. And they use a lot of, do they always use weeks? No, that one's in Gentle Arts. This pattern that I was just showing you is all in Weeks Dye Works, and I was admiring how many of those colors I think I have. Um, but this one is like all gentle arts, so. I also like this one because it makes me think of my sister. It's called A Sister's Love, and there's the sister's names. Oh. I'm reading the story about it because she, wait a minute, I don't wanna know. A sister's Love, original design. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is really, really cool because it is actually, Barb found this sampler that she thought was an antique. It's not, it's a reproduction. And she was going to reproduce it herself, but then she was like, oh, actually I have a reproduction. And she found the original sampler in the collection of the State Museum of Pennsylvania and allowed, they got permission to publish this adaptation of the piece, which is very nice. Um, but they don't have any other information about um, the sisters in the piece. That's kind of cool. So anyway, there's 12 patterns in here. Um, a lot of them have been released previously, but then some of them are new. I'm never really sure of like which, like how are we supposed to know? Um, but like, I, like this Spell of the Moon I know is a separate release. This October 31st, I think, is separate. I'm, I could be wrong. Um, and there's also like Bittersweet September is in here. But there's lots of cool, cool new stuff. So I've got like a dozen or so copies of that left in stock right now, which is exciting. And then one of the most exciting things is that I finally got my color and cotton fabric order that I placed long ago. And obviously I knew it was gonna be slow and there's still some of it is 
on its way. Um, but I placed that order because my evil twin Ryan, Wild Violet Cross Stitch, is on the cover of the December issue. What? That's her cozy Cardinals piece. I'm so proud of her. Um, and so I have the called for periwinkle fabric from Color and Cotton that you can get if you want to stitch your own cozy cardinals. I highly recommend it because they're very, very cute. Um, the chart is all DMC and it calls for 36 count. So I have 36 count in a custom cardinal cut. If you stitch it on the 36 count, it fits in a five by seven frame. Is that right, Ryan? I don't remember anymore. I'm pretty sure that if stitched on that, it fits in a five by seven frame. And she's probably yelling at me through her computer right now because she's told me this so many times. But if you are not a fan of 36 count, because I personally typically am not a fan, um, you can also get it in 32 count or 28 count linen, or I think I have one 16 count Ada piece left. Cozy Cardinals. Yes, the design size will be four and one eighth by five and five eighths, but you need like some space around it for like, you know, to be framed like that requires five by seven. I just think it's glorious. I am so proud of her and I want to stitch it. Yes. Yes, I do. They're so cute. Anyway, I've got that. I've got a lot of other color and cotton fabric that is not yet listed, but will be soon. I have some picture of this plus that is will be listed soon. And I have a couple other, like a couple things. It's gonna be a nice little smorgasbord um, of fabric and items. Are you ready for a book and then a giveaway? Which one should we do first? Let's do the giveaway first, if you've made it this far. Um, I did not show my haul necessarily this video um, because I, I got the Advent Stitchy Box and I also got my um, December Jacks stash from Sassy Jacks. Uh, which is like a little it's like a box of fun because ryan and i opened ours together and like we got different colors of things so like you know we each got like three silks from their from their shop but we got different colors um or like three different beads but we got different colors and then like a couple older charts that we got different um but i didn't want to show you like a hundred tiny things and this video is already long enough but i did want to show you a couple things because i'm going to give them away because Sassy Jacks in Asheville, no, they're not, they're in Weaverville, but near Asheville, North Carolina, um, they have their own sampler line where they do reproductions and original samplers. Um, it's called Sassafras Samplers. And so I have gotten a couple of their, I forget if this one is original. Yeah. I have one here that is, um, Da, 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 da. Okay, this one is original, I think, as long as I know. It's a Shakespeare-related thing. Ooh, Shakespeare, you say. Yes. I think I've showed this before. Um, this is Adder's Fork. It's very fun if that is your jam, but it is not mine. Um, so there's that one. And then there, this is a totally different vibe. This is Mabel Took. Toque, I don't know, Mabel Toque, 1779. Um, and she, look at those gorgeous flowers. This involves some queen stitch. I don't know what that is, but the stitching diagram looks a little bit scary. Scary. Um, it's got Bargello work, queen stitch, rice stitch, Algerian eyelet, cross stitch over one and cross stitch over two and a satin stitch. So it's got a lot going on. Um, so I have also, it comes with a little finishing card, like a sticker for you to put on the back, a finishing sticker plate thing. 
Um, and it also comes with like this cute handy little like picture and your floss key, which I think is smart so that you have that um, easily accessible. Um, so I am not gonna stitch either of these things because this is not exactly my jam, but it could be your jam. And so if you would like to stitch these, please leave a comment with the word sassy in it. I'm going to give them both away together as one. So sassy, cause sassy jacks, sassafras. Um, yeah, just use it in a sentence somehow, however you please. Um, and I will draw a winner uh, next time I record, which is probably going to be well, I guess next time I record like a typical floss tube, which will be like mid January, hopefully, maybe end of January, somewhere between there. But if you comment before I upload next, then hooray, you can win. Um, so let me know. Hooray. That'll be fun. And last but not least, we're going to talk about a book. I don't have the actual book to show you uh, because I listened to the audiobook, but it is a book by Fiona Davis, I think, called the Lions of Fifth Avenue. If you like historical fiction, which I do. If you like early feminists, which I do. If you like books about books, which I do, or books about libraries, yes, this is a book for you. I loved it. I had like, it came out somewhat recently and I had kind of like heard it and seen it and thought like, oh yeah, that's something I'll enjoy. And I just kind of, you know, threw it on my library holds list and forgot about it. And then it came up and I was like, I don't really have time for this. And so I like, skipped it and like got back on the holds list. Then I started listening to it. And at first I thought, oh no, this is a dual narrator, dual timeline situation, which I do not always love. Um, in this case, it's about 80 years apart. And so one protagonist is in 1913 in New York City. And one protagonist is in 1993 in New York City. And so that I really loved because I often don't like like when you when you jump from the past to like very present day because it just feels like I don't know I don't know what it is but this felt like double historical because I mean early 90s not that long ago but long enough that life is super different now um and you know I was a I was a young child at the time so it was just fun to kind of like imagine the world 30 years ago um or not quite but you get it anyway the protagonist in 1913, her family lives inside the New York Public Library because her husband is the superintendent. And so that's fun. Um, you have like the early feminist movement in New York City, that's like suffragettes and everything because it's only 1913. So like we've got work to do. So that's really cool. There's a mystery in both storylines. There's missing books, there's rare books, there's all kinds of intrigue and chicanery. I don't know, but, um, highly 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 recommend that's all i'm going to share about it it is a nice fun mystery of like multi-level mystery without being like scary i just i get scared too easily when i read i get nightmares it's fine um the audiobook is really excellent it has two different narrators um for each for each uh woman and you know like as the book went on there were some things where there was like a moment where i finally got to where i was like ooh, okay Birdie, who doesn't like historical fiction, will like this book. I'm going to tell her to read it. And then we kept going. And like, you know, by the time I got to the end of the book, I was like, yeah, there's a lot of things I could have predicted, but I just was like the perfect level of coziness and mystery. And like, I didn't quite know what was going to happen, but then I could kind of like imagine what was about to happen right before it happened. But that was okay with me. And it was just really, really lovely. It's been a long time since I've read or listened to a book that gave me like, the warm cozies and I just wanted to sit and listen to it and stitch. So if you need a book, I recommend it. Let me know if you listen to it. What is your favorite book about books? Um, I'm also a big fan of The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey, which I haven't read in quite a while. It's a little sad, so you have to be careful with it. Um, but it's about a, a man who runs a book, book, blah, 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 book shop. Um, I'm trying to remember, there's like one other one that I like a lot. Let me know, let me know your thoughts and feelings. Um, and I'm gonna go, we're right under an hour. That's plenty of time. I'm gonna go 
clean up my house so it's ready for Christmas. Hooray! Have a great New Year and Christmas and holiday and all the things and I hope you get in lots of stitchy time. I hope you're staying safe and that your holiday is filled with as many merry moments as possible. One of my favorite podcasts um, Pantsuit Politics, they like to say, have the best day available to you. So have the best holiday available to you. Bye, friends.